Hello everybody, this is Juan Liao again. Welcome to my virtual school, Physics is Fun. Today's topic is water wave. Okay, so as we have learned that water wave is a transverse wave. So how do we study water wave in the lab? We use this apparatus called ripper tank. So ripper tank is a shallow tank with the bottom of the tank made of glass or any, any material that is transparent. So we place water onto the tank, but the depth of the water is not very deep, okay? Only a few centimeter deep, okay? Now, above the water surface, we place an oscillating object, which is connected to a motor. So when the motor oscillate, the object will oscillate too. Above the water, uh, the ripper tank, there is a bulb. So this bulb will provide light that passes through the water waves. So we see the water waves from the, a piece of paper that is placed below. So the water wave pattern can be viewed from the piece of paper. Okay, and it looks like bright and dark fringes. Okay, so this is a picture that shows ripper tank. Now, the, vibrate, the vibrating object can be a bar. So this bar is connected to a motor that vibrates. So the bar will vibrate accordingly with the same frequency. And a plane wave will be produced. If the vibrating object is a ball, then circular wave will be produced. So on the piece of paper, we will see the water wave pattern. So as you can see here, it is bright and dark circles of the circular wave. So how are these bright and dark fringes formed? Let's look at this diagram. This diagram shows the cross section of a water wave. So we can see that water wave that is crest and there is trough. So when light passes through the crest, light converge. Light converges and form a bright fringe on the paper. But at the trough region, at the trough region, light diverges. It diverges, it spread out, and therefore a dark fringe is formed. That's why we see bright and dark fringes on the paper. So these bright and dark fringes is actually the representation of water wave. So this is how it will look like. Okay, now the ripper tank must be placed level on the table so that the depth of water is constant because depth of water will affect the speed of water wave and also the wavelength of water wave. In a deep region, the speed of water wave is faster than in a shallow region. Okay, that's why every time before you go out to the seaside or for picnic, your mother will remind you not to go to the deep end, right? Because deep end is more dangerous. Why is it more dangerous other than your leg cannot touch the seabed? It is because at the deep end, the deeper end, water wave is faster than in the shallow end. And in a deep region, wavelength of water wave is longer than in a shallow region. What about the frequency? Frequency is remain the same. Yeah? Frequency no change because frequency is controlled by the motor, yeah, the vibration of the motor. So the vibration of the motor provides the frequency of the water wave. Now, water wave continue to move forward. So how are we going to measure the wavelength? So in order to measure the wavelength easily, we use this device called stroboscope. A stroboscope is a plate, is a disc, 
with many slits, many slits on it. And as we spin the stroboscope and we look through this hole here, we can see the motion of anything that is moving. Okay, example, a water wave that is moving forward. So we can change the motion. We can, what we see through this hole depends on the frequency of the stroboscope. So if the frequency of the stroboscope is the same as the frequency of the water wave, so the water will look static. That means not moving. This is when the frequency of the stroboscope is equal to the frequency of the water wave. Okay, let's view this video to see how stroboscope is used to freeze the motion of a moving object. Okay, this is a fan that is spinning. When it is viewed through the stroboscope, the motion of the spinning fan can be changed. You can slow it down, slow it down, until it becomes static, right? So when it becomes static, this is what we call the motion has been frozen. Okay, so the motion of a moving object is frozen when the frequency of the stroboscope equals to the frequency of the wave. But how do we determine the frequency of the stroboscope? Alright, so a stroboscope will have many slits, some two slits, some ten slits. Okay, so the number of slits of the stroboscope is n, and the number of times we spin the stroboscope is p. Number of time we spin in one second, yeah? in one second is p. And the frequency of the stroboscope is equal to n p. That is the number of slits on the stroboscope times the number of times we spin it in one second. For example, in this stroboscope, there are 12 slits and we spin it two times in one second. Therefore, the frequency of the stroboscope is 24 hertz. Okay, so this picture shows us a water wave that has been frozen. So if we measure this distance and we see, we name it as XCM. And in this XCM, there are 10 wavelength, 10 lambda. Why is it 10, 10 lambda? Can you recall what is lambda? Of course, lambda is the distance between crest and the next crest. Okay, so remember, crest produce a bright fringe. So this is the position of crest, and this is also another crest. Therefore, this is 1 lambda, 2 lambda, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, let's say this XCM is 20 cm, and in this 10, 20 cm, there are 10 lambda, therefore 1 lambda is 20 cm. Uh, sorry, it's 2 cm. Okay, frequency of the water wave, as we have as mentioned just now, we can determine it through the frequency of the stroboscope. And therefore, the speed of water wave can be determined using the formula V equals to F lambda. Okay, stroboscope is used in our daily lives for many purposes. Okay, one example is photograph taken with a stroboscopic camera shows the bouncing ball. Okay, so this bouncing ball, this picture of a bouncing ball shows the different position of the ball as it bounces. Okay, now the motion of the hands of the ballerina is frozen, so we see different position of her hand. So, stroboscopic photograph is used in the field of sports to help improve sportsman's uh, technique. Okay. So, here in our lesson, we use stroboscope to freeze the motion of an object. 
this is example of other uses of stroboscope. Okay, we will end here for today's lesson. We will meet again sometime, some other time. Bye-bye.